I am fascinated by toy history and one of my favorite time periods in toy history is actually the 80s to the 90s where you get these big media driven franchises that last for a decade or more and I find these so fascinating because it really really marks a complete shift in how toys were made and marketed and what they looked like and I love the colorful mass market exciting toys like My Little Pony there is very there are very few doll lines that quite capture this as well as My Little Pony and I wanted to discuss them today but we're not actually going to be discussing the ponies themselves We'll go over them a little bit, but we're actually going to be focusing on the My Little Blank, the others. <laughs> if you don't know, within the original My Little Pony lineup, which you can see over here, these are Generation 1 My Little Ponies. My Little Pony, especially the Generation 1 line, is so interesting because I really can't just grab one pony to be like, this is kind of what they look like because they're so different. I mean, just from this little glimpse you can see here, you can really tell how different they are, but I'll show you two ponies just to give you a glimpse at how they look. So this is one of the originals. This is Cotton Candy. This is the concave foot version. So the originals had flat feet, then they came out with concave feet. They've been re-released many, many times. You might not have the original, original one. I actually do, but I display this one because she looks better. And... I mean, even to this day, they're being re-released. Basic Fun actually released more this year for the 40th anniversary of My Little Pony, so yeah, these are very iconic, and the reason they keep re-releasing them is because My Little Pony was such a cultural phenomenon and still remains one to this day, and it had such a really a cultural impact on toys and lots of people. I love them. So this is Cotton Candy, and then this is a pony that came out towards the end of the line, so <laughs> this is one of the Rock and Beat ponies, so you can really see how different they are, but I mean towards the end of the line too you get other do other ponies with the more drab colors that you might be used to in these, but you also get a lot of bright colors. My Little Pony has so much range, I could talk about it forever. I just sweep past my shelf and show you all of these different ones. And I mean, within the genre of being a pony, the original My Little Pony lineup, which by the way, uh, My Little Pony started in 1983 and it was created by Bonnie Zacherly and she originally had created My Pretty Pony in 1981, which was, I mean, looked like this, but brown. And it was pretty successful. Unfortunately, I don't have My Pretty Pony or her baby. Ugh. I've had so many opportunities to get her and I keep missing out. My Little Pony proper, not My Pretty Pony, started in 1983 and it ends in around 1992. And in certain countries, it probably petered out a little bit later than that. And... Ever since then, about once a decade, there is a new version of My Little Pony. They have this rebooting cycle, which is quite interesting. Let me know if you know of any toy brands that kind of did this before My Little Pony. I feel like this is a very uniquely My Little Pony thing, at least at the time. So it's pretty cool. Um, I never really thought about it until just now. I was just thinking about it. But anyway, I'll show you uh, just a little sampling of each one. So this is Generation 2. These only lasted two years. They were not super popular. They lasted from around 1997 to 1999 in the US. They were not popular in the US, but I've heard they were a lot more popular in Europe, and the majority of them, I believe, are European exclusives, which is a shame because these are actually some of my personal favorites. I love them. Uh, you can see just how different they are from Generation 1. They're very, very interesting. I really like these. After Generation 2 was quickly swept out of the way, we have Generation 3, who uh, I grew up with, actually. These were my childhood ones. I was born in 1999. These came out right when I was of the age to start playing with them. I love these. They were pretty popular. They seemed to have, like, a pretty good success. They clearly never hit what Generation 1 did, but I will say that they never got as creative as Generation 1. You don't really see uh, the diversity and types of ponies and weirdness that you saw in Generation 1. I won't We'll get there. We'll talk about Generation 1's weirdness. <laughs> and then we have, after that, of course, around 2010, we have Generation 4, which, uh, along with Generation 1, these are the- most people probably think of these now when you mention My Little Pony. You can see just how different My Little Ponies have become. These were actually pretty lambasted by the pony community at the time, I remember. I mean, I was 10, but I was on the internet. Because um, this is when I actually became a toy collector was because of Generation 4, so they mean a lot to me. I started collecting toys in 2011 after staring at them online for a year. They mean a lot. And then they lasted about a decade as well. Very popular. I don't know the sales numbers exactly, who was more popular, Gen 1 or Gen 4, but Gen 4 definitely had like a ridiculous cultural impact and not just with kids. And then in the 2020s, of course, we have Generation 5. These are the newest generation. If you like My Little Pony at all, I highly suggest checking these out. I'm not as into the toy line yet. I think the play sets are awesome, but they're really pivoting away from doing My Little Ponies, brushable My Little Ponies. 
which is very weird. They still do some brushable ones, but not nearly as often, and they don't do a lot of characters, unfortunately, but the show is really, really cute in the movie. The first one they did was fantastic. Um, really like Generation 5. Anyways, now let's get to the meat of this video. You've had your introduction to My Little Pony. That's your brief history. Let's move back into the 80s and 90s, and we're gonna go over the weirdos. Let me explain. So again, most of us were born into a post My Little Pony society, so we've just come to accept how weird these are, uh, just kind of as normal. Like, yeah, they're horses, they're colorful, they have symbols. But that's a My Little Pony. That's a thing. Um, we've accepted them, but they're very strange. And don't worry, it's going to get so much weirder as we move through this. And before we get started, we really need to define what a My Little Pony is, because for me to call something in My Little Pony imitation or something inspired by My Little Pony or something trying to become the next My Little Pony, we kind of need to have a definition. As not only a lifelong My Little Pony fan with a large stable of My Little Ponies, but also a person holding a master's degree in biology, I feel very qualified to give you a scientific rundown of what a My Little Pony is so that we can use that to build the rest of this video on. So number one, a My Little Pony has unnatural colors. For the most part, there are some that are just white, there's some that are a little bit brown or gray, but for the most part, they're all sorts of different colors. And by the way, these don't all have to apply, just most of them do. Number two, we've got cartoon eyes. We've got to have big, friendly eyes that kids feel safe and comfortable looking into. Horses don't have eyes like this, necessarily. They, I feel like, just have big, like, brown or black eyes, right? Um, we need a brushable mane. This is more describing it in toy form, but we gotta have a brushable mane and it's probably in a natural color too, but that falls into category number one of unnatural colors. We've also gotta have a brushable tail. For the most part, they've all got a brushable tail. We are going to have so much fun brushing these. It is very friendly, it is exciting. We get to brush them, it's great. And number five, this is a big one. This sets My Little Pony apart from everybody else. We have symbols on the body somewhere. So for the most part, it is on their little butts, but sometimes it can be a full body symbol, or in the case of other animals we'll get into, it might be somewhere else, just depends. So these five traits are what me, myself as a biologist, these are what I'm looking for when I'm trying to identify that is familiar to me, that is My Little Pony inspired. Not all of them have to apply, but most of them do. Generation 1 is very unique compared to the other My Little Pony lines because, I mean, they went off the wall with some of these concepts. We've got dolls with gems for eyes because they spent too much time in the mines, I'm not kidding. A princess with a fiber optic crown. We've got ponies whose hair grows. We'll get to that. We've got boys. What? That's so unusual. Um, we have ponies with soft fur on their bodies, so like flocking. We've got ponies that talk. We've got like skinny teenager ponies. We have butterfly ponies. And of course, we even have sea ponies. Can we make a seahorse into a My Little Pony? We'll try. I think they pulled it off well. And their symbol is generally a necklace, by the way. <laughs> they do have one. So, looking at sea ponies, that brings us into our first category of this video, which is within the My Little Pony line, not a spin-off, nothing else just a My Little Pony. We had the My Little Pony Friends line. I only have two ponies from this line. It's quite sought after because people love these freaks. People love the fact that Hasbro decided that we needed, the world needed, a lion horse hybrid monster. I mean, it's not really a horse hybrid, but it is a My Little Pony hybrid. So as you can see, we have created this abomination. Is it should it have been created? I don't know, but I'm so glad that it was. It's beautiful. So we have an all pink lion with a brushable mane. We have a brushable tail, which lions, I guess, have like that little tuft at the tail, but they don't really have this. And then we also have little paw print symbol, cartoon eye. This is a work of art. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I mean, this line got weirder. There's a dinosaur in the, I believe the second line. There's a moose one. Oh my gosh, I, I wish I had more of them. The other one that I do actually have is Creamsicle the Giraffe. I feel like this one actually works quite well. I mean, it's a similar situation with the lion, right? They don't actually have tails like this, but they do have manes. These aren't that unusual, I feel, because at least in the first line, for the most part, they picked animals that already kind of had like a mane of some sort or like hair. I mean, a giraffe is just like a really long, strange horse. If you really just look at it and don't 
but don't uh, think about it any further. Um, and we had ones with symbols kind of all over, like Creamsicle, and then also just the traditional classic My Little Pony type symbol here. I love the My Little Pony Friends line, they are awesome. But within My Little Pony, we actually get more. The My Little Pony Friends line within Generation 1, which are the things that are not horses in any way. I mean, you also have the sea ponies, which I, in the My Little Pony universe, these are just other ponies, I guess? I don't know. I guess it's like a mermaid, but there's also mermaid ponies too. I don't have any of those, but there's mermaid ponies, so. They really, they really did a lot and I love it. I think the, the best use is definitely Butterfly Pony. That is excellent. Um, unfortunately, they only really did the Pony Friends line from 1986 to 1987. Um, I wish they had continued doing it, but instead, it seems like Hasbro wanted to push the envelope a little bit. They wanted to try their luck. They wanted to see if they could make this happen again. But My Little Pony would keep going. There would just also be another one. So I actually, I knew about Little Litters. I have some. I couldn't find any for this video, but this is what they look like. Little Litters were... I thought the line was called Lil Litters, but no, it was My Little Bunny, My Little Kitty, My Little Puppy. That is news to me. I did not know that. I really thought that they were their own whole thing. Also made by Hasbro, but anyway, so they were trying to make something else. They're a little different. They don't have brushable hair for the most part. They have brushable tails, even in cases like a bunny where like, I guess they could have had a small tough tail, but no, they have full tails. They are gorgeous. The only ones I have are bunnies. I have two bunny ones and I love them a lot. They are so funny. And then they also did Dream Beauties. I also don't have those, but here's a photo of what they look like. Dream Beauties is basically Hasbro trying <laughs> to backpedal a little bit from My Little Pony. I think towards the end of My Little Pony, they were kind of throwing darts at the wall and seeing if anything would, anything would stick. Dream Beauties we'll get back to because there's a related line that I want to tell you guys about, but they're really just like realistic horses again. They went from... <laughs> a relatively realistic brown My Pretty Pony horse um, to these Technicolor amazing magical unicorns, crystal-eyed things, butterfly horses, sea horses, sea ponies of course, mermaid horses, and then we're like let's make realistic horses but with the colors still and see what happens. Those must have been reasonably successful because there was actually another line similar. We'll get to it though. And then this is where we're going. We need to talk about this. These are made by Hasbro, so these are made by the same company that made My Little Pony. They are My Little Pony Birds. They're a completely separate line called Fairy Tale Birds, and I love them so much. Clearly they were somewhat successful with the My Little Pony buying crowd because all of the ones that I have came with lots of G1 My Little Ponies that I bought. So I used to, back 10 years ago when it was easier to do this, I would just buy a giant bin of somebody's childhood My Little Pony collection so I would get them all together, which was really cool. And often they would come with one of these stinkers. When I was like 13, I didn't know as much as I know now, but I fell in love with these. I did my research and found out what they were. They're made by Hasbro in 1986 and 1987, so towards the end of the My Little Pony line, but My Little Pony still had like half of its half of its reign left by that point. Fairy tale birds are excellent. So <laughs> they have given birds brushable manes, or I guess like puffs of hair, I don't know, and brushable tails genius these are so these are cream of the crop i love these so much so this is what they look like this i have two of them from this like more tropical line these are super fun they all came with perches but the perches are actually relatively hard to find and fairy tale birds in general are a bit scarce like you don't really see a whole lot of them around they're so cute though you can see that they could perch on your finger these are so friendly i feel like a similar i don't think fingerlings was inspired by these at all i'm not asserting that in any way just to be clear but these have a similar novelty that i think fingerlings did where it's like so satisfying that the toy can interact with you directly like this you can just walk through the town with your fairy tale bird on you aren't these so cool i love them we decided this one is a mess sorry um, i've had her since i was 13 i have not done a restoration yet um, these ones I restored, they're a lot nicer, but a little messy. It's been a few years, but let's, in, okay, let's check off our list. So, <laughs> unnatural colors. For birds, they actually have colors like this, but not quite like this. Not all of these are very realistic, especially for the type of bird they are. So we're still going to check that off. But birds were genius because they're already pretty colorful. So let's just make it even more exciting. Uh, cartoon eyes, absolutely. 
We've got cartoon eyes. Check. Brushable mane. We pulled it off. We did it. Birds have feathers. Not brushable hair generally. Some probably. Respectfully, I am not an ornithologist. Me and birds do not get along well at all. Um, brushable tail. We also pulled that off. Yes. Excellent. Symbol on body. Usually posterior. In this case, it's blocked by the wings. They have symbols on their little bellies generally, so you can see. This one's actually a raised symbol, which is pretty cool. Um, this one is a little heart. And they had lots of different poses. They even had different types of birds. There's a few that I'm not the biggest fan of the sculpt of, but I mean, they were really cool. I wish that they had lasted longer. I guess they were just kind of, again, throwing shots in the dark to see what would stick and the birds didn't do it for them, unfortunately, although I desperately, desperately wish that they did. <laughs> moving on from the fairy tale birds, I know this is moving from horse to not horse to horse again. I'm so sorry about that. But I kind of wanted to show something that came out during the My Little Pony line that wasn't a pony. All right. Although I introduced you guys to Dream Beauties first, we have a line that actually came out before Dream Beauties and possibly Hasbro was responding to that. Who's to say? Probably were though. Anyways, these next ones I'm going to show you were made by Kenner. They were made in 1988. Dream Beauties came out in 1990, so right at the tail end of Generation 1. And Kenner created Fashion Star Phillies. Kenner was actually acquired by Hasbro during the reign of these, uh, which unfortunately ended it. But funny enough, if you know Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders, they actually use some of the sculpts from Dream Beauties in there. I actually didn't know that until I was doing my preliminary research for this video. I just had to look up the dates for everything because I didn't remember them off the top of my head. But anyway, these have another thing that My Little Pony also had in Generation 1 that was a huge emphasis. They have like dress up clothing. So they had dress up clothing, they had hair clips, of course they have brushable hair. This one isn't the best example of being like My Little Pony-esque because it, she's pretty um, realistic colors. Most of them were not like gray, Appaloosa looking ponies, right? But polka dot symbol. Which, again, that's that's an actual thing ponies have, but bear with me. We've got purple hooves. There's our unnatural color. We did it. Um, we also have, like, a symbol on the face. We've got a little star. Anyway, these are so 80s to me. It's like the, the little hair, which My Little Ponies generally have a little forelock like this, too. These are just, these are great. These are fantastic. Dream Beauties comes out in 1990. I don't have any of them. They look overall fairly similar. I think Dream Beauties and Fashion Star Phillies were actually a really good idea, and if they had come out sooner, like, within the My Little Pony reign a little bit, when My Little Pony was still super successful, I feel like these would have actually done quite well. I feel like horse girls, generally, are not big fans of My Little Pony, actually. You'll find that they have their own thing. They've got their briar horses. My Little Ponies are humunculi of a horse. Because really, like, what- My Little Ponies aren't really that horse-like, right? They're, they're very weird. Um, but- these are very smart because if you still want the fun colors and glitter and fantasy play, but you don't like that those are like weird cat things, they're more cat-like than horse-like. I mean, even their hooves aren't really defined. You got this. I think this was a really good idea. Um, Dream Beauties was quite interesting too, but I'm pretty sure it was inspired by this, but who knows? I don't know. And when I say something's inspired, I want to make this abundantly clear before we get into the imitations, I'll say, of My Little Pony, the the lines that are like, yeah, you were responding to Hasbro with that one, weren't you? Do not take this as, Mattel's a dirty copycat, they don't have any original ideas. No. This is how the toy industry works. An idea comes up, and then other companies kind of try to create something at least somewhat similar. Sometimes it's a coincidence, and I don't want to like ever accuse a designer of plagiarism. And ultimately, this is a big industry, and this sort of behavior is what creates higher quality, more interesting concepts, right? For example, you got Monster High in 2010, and then you got Bratzilla's, Novi Stars, Pinky Cooper, all of these other doll lines that, yes, could have existed without Monster High, but likely would not have gotten past the planning stage without Monster High. Because, of course, you- and I'll make a video about this, I will, about um, toys that came before Monster High. Let me know if you want to see that. Um, toys that came before Monster High that are very monstrous. Um, I would love to do that. But uh, Monster High is what kind of proved that it could work. And I feel like My Little Pony had the same idea, right? They showed that you could create this very, very bizarre fantasy creature that was just basically a hunk of plastic with some hair hanging out. And it would sell. And not only sell, it would flourish. So yeah. Anyways, so ultimately, I don't work for any of these companies. I don't really have a desire to work for any of these companies. It's it's the business, baby. 
I don't care personally because it gives me more exciting toys such as these ones that I'm going to show you now. This is a little pretty kitty. These are so blatantly My Little Ponies except that they are cats. These were created by Hasbro in 1989 to 1981 so you know after the um, actual cats in the My Little Pony line after My Little Kitty. These were seemingly very popular with the My Little Pony buying crowd as well. Almost every single one I've added to my collection has been the same way as I got fairy tale birds. They were just in with My Little Ponies and I was like, what is that? Little Pretty? It's actually called Little Pretty because they also did puppies. I only have one of the puppies. I'm not a big dog person, but this is pretty stinking cute and it honestly makes more sense because there's lots of long-haired dogs that are like excessively long-haired with tails like this and with big floppy hairy ears. So these actually make a lot of sense. They're grounded in more reality. I mean, except the fact that they're like, this one is cherry red, has these big cartoon eyes and a butterfly symbol, but I digress. Little Pretty is a work of art. They decided we're gonna take the concept of My Little Pony. We're gonna take that unnatural color. We're gonna take that cartoon eye thing, we're gonna take the strange shape thing where we like really reinvent what it means to be shaped like a certain animal. We're gonna take the symbol on the butt and we're going, and a brushable mane and tail, and we're gonna make it work on a cat. And it, they pulled it off, I think. I mean, is it, is it realistic for a cat? No, it's not, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful and I love them. And this is just such a beautiful, magical thing and I'm so glad that it exists, and I wish that more things like this existed. I think the world would be so much of a better place. I mean, think about the ingenuity and artistry of making a purple cat with a purple mane, head of hair, and a purple brushable tail. There's no vertebrae in this tail. I'm not using it to balance. I'm not using it for anything. I am using it as a beautiful brushable tail, and that is an incredible thing. Also, oh my god, this cat is like 30 years old now. Amazing. One of the oldest cats to ever live. And also putting a bee symbol on the butt, of course. Duh. And interestingly, I don't know if this lines up because of the timing. Some toys, some toy companies can pump out toys very quickly. They can go from design to actual release very quickly. But other companies, it will take several years. So it's hard to say what happened here. But interestingly, Hasbro, in the same years of 1989 through 1991, actually released something else. I wanted to show these in this video because they are a Hasbro brushable cat toy, but they're quite different. I I really have never seen anything else like this. I love these a lot. Um, I only have two of them. This is my most recent one that I got, and I picked this one because this one's in a natural color, but most of them are actually natural colors. It's really just a brushable cat, but it's more realistic as a cat. It still has a brushable tail, but I mean, it's like poofy. It looks like a tail. So this is Yaki Texture Hair. I believe they used it on the Perfume Puff My Little Ponies. I've never held one in my hands though, so I don't know if it's actually this fiber, but isn't this incredible? If you don't know how they pulled this off, this isn't a plushie, it's a plastic toy. It's basically a My Little Pony, right? They rooted the hair into the body of the, it's incredible. This this is beautiful. We need to see more things like this. Again, the world would be so much of a better place. I love these sweetie kitties and there's also sweetie pups. I have those too. I don't know where they are. I'm not as into those. Sweetie kitties are where it's at. My other one is a yellow cat. Most of them have realistic color schemes. They released, I believe these are called the party time kitties and they're more colorful. This one's very like cotton candy. I love her so much. I love her so much. This... <sighs> It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Sweetie kitties, everyone. Round of applause. Do it. I expect a round of applause and I'm gonna sit here and wait until you do it. Come on. Don't offend her. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So those are sweetie kitties and little pretty kitties. I have to say, I um, when I was a child collecting generation three, the most that they had were unicorns and pegasi and little weird fairy monsters called breezies. And um, ponies with super long hair. They had some gimmicks, but they didn't go nearly as far as Generation 1. When I discovered Generation 1 when I was like 10 years old, because I actually, these are my two childhood Gen 1s that I got at a garage sale at some point. My mom had Generation 1 when she was a kid, of course. And that's what's so exciting about My Little Pony 2. But anyway, I never would have, 
I mean, I just realized a lion's a cat. That kind of fits into our cat thing. Anyway, Kingsley was the first Malibu Pony cat, I guess. Um, anyway, um, I never would have dreamed. I mean, these, I knew they just looked older to me. Not like older toys, but they just looked more mature than the Generation 3 ponies, mostly because of the colors being more drab um, than the Generation 3s that I have. But these two were like the the parents of my ponies. They were the... They were the older ponies. Also, Rainbow Dash in Generation 3, she used to say darling a lot, and I equated that with being a mother. I don't know. Anyway, it's not related, but it is. But anyway, as a kid, with these, I never would have dreamed that there would also be cat things and bird things. It's just incredible. And now, there are more lines in the 80s and early 90s that I would love to go over with you guys. I just don't have them in my collection yet, but if you want to see a video on it, please give me an excuse to buy more of these. Go ahead. There's weirder. If you thought the cats and the bunnies and the birds were strange, oh, it gets so much weirder. It gets weirder than that. It really does. And it even gets weirder than this last thing I'm going to show you, which are Darlin Dinos, which came out from 1992 to 1993. So these came out to stomp on the grave of My Little Pony Generation 1 as it died. Anyway, <laughs> um, I actually don't have any of these out of box, but these are Darlin Dinos. Let's see if this mentions its hair, by the way. Darling dinos are sweet and lovely girl dinosaurs who are the, or who are living in the present era. They were hidden by their parents in order to protect them. They reemerged recently when a construction crew dug them up. The dinos were still alive and they had not aged at all in that time. I, there's something about this blurb that is so lazy and low effort and hilarious to me. I love it so much. They had not aged at all in that time in the past like 60 something million years ago if these were and Cretaceous dinosaurs, which not all of them are. We have some Jurassic ones. So we've got like <laughs> like over 100 million years ago, but it's fine. Anyway, Darwin Dinos, T-Rex and the Tyrannosaurus, if you couldn't tell. Bronte, the Brontosaurus, again, if you couldn't tell. And Tricera, S-A-R-A-H, the Triceratops, are pretty and fun to play with. They have sparkling jewels and their long colorful hair is fun to style too. These dinos are just Darlin. Darlin dinos, TM. It's incredible. So these are made by a company called Meredith. I assume they got acquired at some point. I don't know this company very well. I only know them from Darlin dinos. I imagine they made more stuff. Anyway, Darlin dinos... There's a My Little Pony dinosaur too, so I can't say that this is the most unique idea in the world. And the My Little Pony dinosaur was first, but my god. These are incredible. Um, mine are in box. I do have a Tricera, Tricera tops um, out of box. I have not unpacked her yet. I moved in a year ago, but we're still working on it. We're still setting up the My Little Pony area. Um, so I have these two Brontes in box. If you're a fan of My Little Pony and also weird dinosaur things, or just weird dinosaur things, but you also like pretty colors, go hunt these down. They're weirdly cheap. I got three new in box for like $60 the other day um, in preparation for this video because I couldn't find Triceratops. Anyway, this actually says long hair to style right there. You see what I mean? They're always advertising the brushable hair thing. Anyway, um, this is a Gem Dazzler and this is a Sweet Talker. So they always just had the line name based on what the gimmick was. So the gimmick here really is just that they have gems on them. But the Sweet Talker also has a gem on her. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> these are a beautiful mess. I love them. They are so strange. Also, how is this a brontosaurus? Can you please explain? Because the thing that makes a brontosaurus a brontosaurus is that long neck. This is just like when, when you ask someone to draw a dinosaur, they just come up with this weird mixture of every single dinosaur. This is kind of what, what you get. More like an iguanodon shape or something. I don't know. Anyway, I had to show you darling dinos. They come out at the end of My Little Pony. They do not last long. People were over My Little Pony. They were like, enough is enough! until the 2000s rolled around when my generation, the enlightened generation, I'm kidding by the way, but the enlightened generation who saw the light of My Little Pony and then the 2010s generation, the, the generation that was like My Little Pony age, My Little Pony buying age in 2010, also the ones that weren't like me, <laughs> um, they were also, they just got it. I don't know what was going on in the 90s guys, y'all needed to step up your game. Generation 2 deserved better. Anyway, to conclude, 
that is it for this video. I really wanted to share with you guys these sorts of strange things. I think this is such a fun topic and there's so many different toy lines where it was so popular and so different from everything that came before that it really redefined a generation of toys to come. And I mean, you still see the impact of My Little Pony to this day. And that is incredible. I mean, they even My Little Ponyified Littlest Pet Shop. If you didn't know, Littlest Pet Shop was originally made by Kenner, who again was acquired by Hasbro. Um, and Littlest Pet Shops... I mean, they have a lot of the hallmarks of My Little Pony. Some of them even have brushable hair, but they're unnatural colors. They've got the big, I mean, some of them are. Later down the line, they become unnatural. Um, they have cartoon eyes. They're, they're also very like cartoonish shapes in general. You can see the My Little Ponyification of Little's Pet Shop. And that's when they started to succeed a lot more, by the way, is when they did that. There's so many more. There's also imitation lines that are more like in the bootleg territory and I didn't get them in the mail in time for this video, but I'll show them to you in a part two of this video as we move on. As we move on. And, I mean, I miss this. I don't understand why um, Hasbro moved away from what made Generation 1 so successful, which originally it was that it was something so new and different. You had just these very, very strange things. I can't imagine they thought these were going to do super well, but Bonnie Zachary is a genius, and everyone who worked on My Little Pony is a genius. And deserves to be a millionaire. I love them so much and if I love them that means they're perfect and flawless and excellent and amazing. Anyway, um, you know these are pretty different but the most you could do with what they had originally was just different poses. Oh also we can make Pegasi and unicorns I guess and then they kept going. They started doing ponies with symbols all over their bodies. They started doing, I mean I showed them to you earlier but like I'm not kidding. The lore for these is that they were enslaved in a mine <laughs> and they they, it was like a crystal mine and the crystals like replaced their eyes because they were so mistreated. I, it's horrible, but the Twinkle Eye Ponies were very successful. And to this day, they are some of the most expensive ones that you can try to get a hold of. I mean, they did so much. There's see-through, like sparkly ponies. There's talking ponies. There's those like rock and beat ponies, which are just like, I'm so glad these happened because they're so cute 80s and I love it. Um, you have Merry Christmas Pony. You have a wedding pony. You have the, the teenage ponies. I've got Goldilocks here. I've got a little baby princess pony here. I've got another bride pony. There's two of them. They're gay. I love it. There's also a groom pony. He's just the best man. Um, flutter ponies are really hard to find with their wings, but we have flutter ponies, which have little like bee wings. Again, we've got the butterfly ponies. There's just so... Charles Entertainment Cheese himself even got a My Little Pony with the Chuck E. Cheese baby. There's so much creativity and fun in the My Little Pony Generation 1 line, even if you don't consider the things that aren't even horses, right? But then when you get to Generation 2 and 3, they kind of throw that away. In Generation 2, you have a couple of boys. I think actually just one. Is Prince Clover the only one? I don't remember. And then in Generation 3, we don't have like, even boy ponies, and we only really have... The Breezies are the strangest ones, and they're just small ponies with fairy wings and little antenna. That's it. So they're basically just bug ponies. You don't really move away from that in Generation 3 or 2, which is really weird uh, because they've, they had something that was working and they decided to pedal back on it. And I know Generation 1 didn't last forever, but it lasted a long time. And I don't know. I don't know everything about the sales data, but I mean, me as a kid, I wouldn't want my 25th purple pony as much as I would want a cat pony, you know? So it's very weird. Generation 4 really disappointed me because they had this amazingly successful TV show that did so much and continued to be so creative and interesting, but they really didn't do a whole lot with the toy line. In fact, they didn't really release a lot of different um, pony characters at all, like up there. That's basically the, I mean, these two shelves are basically the extent of like all the different characters that they released. I don't have all of them, but I'm not missing that many different characters. So it's really sad. I don't know why they moved away from doing so many different ponies. And then towards the end of generation four, Oh my god, when, when the My Little Pony movie for Generation 4 got it, was that a full theatrical release? I don't know if it was. I saw it in theaters, though. I saw it in Alamo Draft House, uh, which was really cool because it had, like, special merch and stuff. But anyway, they brought in sea ponies? They brought them back. The sea ponies returned. But it was a cop-out, actually, because they weren't even actually sea ponies. And I'm not even sure if sea ponies are even a real thing in that universe because it was actually the hippogriffs which are basically just weird horse things from mythology. It was the hippogriffs in disguise. You can see this is Princess Skystar and you can see her as a sea pony right there. They were just in disguise. They weren't even seahorse. They weren't even sea pony. 
We made these beautiful sea pony designs and they're not even real. Never Chris. The Breezies from Generation 3 also came back. But I mean, you didn't really see a whole lot. Most of the other creatures that you see that are My Little Ponyified in this universe are already pretty horse-like. And even then you get like griffins and they're not My Little Ponyified. I mean, I guess they have the cartoon eyes, but they don't have the unnatural colors really. Um, you had dragons too. Dragons existed in Gen 1. Spike is from Generation 1 if you didn't know, but he was just a little dragon guy. He wasn't really... I mean, there's no unnatural color for a dragon because they're not real, but he didn't have like a mane or anything. He's also in Gen 3, but he didn't get a toy that I know of, but he's in the show. Spike just stays forever. Um, and in Generation 4, he's a lot more popular and like a bigger deal. But I mean, he was he was very in the show for Gen 1, I will say. But they made, there's a lot of dragons, but they didn't give them, they didn't My Little Ponyify them. Can you imagine a My Little Ponyify dragon? Like, give me something... Give me something like this. I mean, this would be a hippogriff if I gave it wings and stuff, right? But give me, give me like a pony. Give me a weird horse thing with horns and dragon wings. Million dollar idea. Hasbro, I will not be mad if you take it. Just send me PR. Anyway. Um, yeah, I hope with Generation 5 that we see more fun interpretations of what we can do with the My Little Pony brand or My Little Pony template the blueprint I guess but I doubt we will because it's been a long time since we've seen it and it's such a shame why when do we go back to this when do we go back to this I want some bright pink cats I want some bright pink rabbits I want some bright pink birds I want to see more I want to see more dinosaurs I want to see like I want to see fish I was like if this exists already I'm sorry I've never seen it but can you imagine something like a fairy tale bird but it's a fish like think about rooted someone make this I'll, I'll let you have it you can have it but think about like how this is rooted on the body right we root a row of hair as the top fin we root two tufts of hair as like the little fins here and then also the 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 uh the dorsal and the ventral fin we'll do both with <laughs> and then we have like s like hair for all the different little fins if it's a lobe fin fitch even better coelacanth do a coelacanth please coelacanth i just need to make this happen i can't do sculpting though i'll learn I want it anyway and then of course the grand finale we do the same thing we did with fairy tale birds right but it's 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 hair the tail of the fish is hair but it's in two different like lobes there's like a plastic sculpted thing that makes it where they're pretty separated and it's beautiful and it's majestic and it draws upon the love of the sea and you can even have other weirdos like octopi with hairs coming out of their tentacles i mean at this point hire me what I said earlier about not wanting to work for toy companies, I was lying. Hire me. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I've decided to ramble. I love My Little Pony. They are so fun. I'm not even into horses. Like, I, I've i interacted with horses. I had a friend as a kid who, like, owned a horse. I think she had two. Um, and we went to her horse all the time, like, every weekend at one point. And I'm not the biggest fan of them. If you're a horse person, I am not insulting horses. But for me and horses don't get along well. Um... I just really like cats and reptiles. Oh my god, my little snake! Can we make my little snake? Or my little iguana with like the, the dew lap is there? <laughs> I really have to go. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know if you want to see more video essay sit down and um, inform you type videos. I needed to sit down and deliver the news to you and I hope you've taken it. Please check the description for any sources for this video. I highly recommend you check out the websites that I'm linking. They are awesome. Any images that I've used, um, they will have credit on screen. So please do not screenshot images from this video unless it is an image of me and my ponies. Do not screenshot the other images from this video because they do not belong to me. They are credited for the actual sources of the information, which are used for reference in this video because unfortunately I do not have them. Uh, but the sources in the description, a lot of them have existed since I was 10, longer than that, but since I was 10 and first exploring My Little Pony and it's so exciting to look back and just reminisce and these are really really amazing websites i'm hoping to make i mean i'm already deep in the trenches of making my own doll database website and it's about to come out soon so um hopefully for dolls we'll have a resource quite like my little pony does my little pony is such an inspiring line for so many people and it continues to captivate and um, entrance children and adults alike and i think it will last forever it'll last forever it'll go through reboots and changes over time but I love them. I can't wait to see what's next, but um, all I ask is that you please make things that aren't just horses.
Or, I mean, they have to be My Little pony fight though. You can't just add a cat to the line. That doesn't count. We we went from... Oh, where's the, where's the little kitty go? Oh. I mean, we went from... I dropped the puppy. We went from this in the My Little Pony line, a cat, to this. To this. So, more like that, please. Okay. For... Man, I, I really missed the opportunity, huh, to say that they even My Little Pony-ified humans next time. For real this time. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. For real. Bye.